Welcome to Coastal Connections. I am Ashley Smith. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, tis the season. And I'm not talking about spring. I know we're a couple of days into spring at this point, but I'm talking about season 23 for the Virginia Arts Festival. So let's talk about that. A lot of exciting things coming up. Joining me now is Robert Cross with the Virginia Arts Festival. Thank you so much for being Good here. Good morning. It's great to be here. This is exciting. I mean, a very, very busy season you all have coming up. We're not going to talk about the calendar just yet, but we got to mention this okay. in a moment because it's just jam packed. But first, tell me what's coming up for Virginia Arts Festival. Well, it's hard to believe we're only three weeks away from opening weekend and it's we have a jam-packed opening weekend so over the six weeks of the festival we'll have 75 performances throughout all of Hampton Roads but that first weekend is concentrated in downtown Norfolk so we open April 12th with Kristen Chenoweth okay. amazing amazing Broadway star so I'm going to ask you a trick question uh -oh. you probably don't know what her very first thing that she would did on Broadway no <laughs> so Charlie Brown so that's her every, first thing everyone knows her from Wicked right she was Glinda in Wicked but her first thing where she won her first Tony Award was Charlie Brown when she was a kid what was she in Charlie Brown no, now you trick question ah, me <laughs> throw it back on you didn't yeah. I? <laughs> so she'll be opening night with the Virginia Symphony okay doing all the great Broadway hits a couple surprises and then the next night we have Storm Large, this amazing cabaret singer, rock singer, a little funky. We'll have her at Granby Theater. And then we wow. close out that weekend with Jessica Lang Dance, probably the most important female American choreographer. Wow. She'll be here with her company and that will be in Chrysler Hall. And it's gonna be a spectacular way to uh, kick off that first weekend. It's just, it, there's so much jam packed into this season. And I know that, I mean, that's just the beginning of what you said, six weeks, right? Six weeks, of, yes. of this festival. Like, it's so exciting. I understand you have a new director of chamber music do. as well. Tell me about her. So, Olga Kern. Uh, so, Andre Michel Shu was our director for the first 20 mm -hmm. years of the festival, and he retired this past year. So, Olga Kern's kind of continued the, uh, the tradition. So, she's the 2001 Van Cliburn gold medalist. Wow. She's a uh, Russian-American, uh, dual citizenship. She okay. splits her time between New York, Prague, where her husband lives, wow. and um, Russia, where her parents still live. Oh my goodness. So she's on the road a lot. Yeah. So she'll curate the whole uh, 20 concerts of the Chamber Music Series, bringing in a bunch of new faces. So we'll kick off with her on April 18th at the Roper Theater. She'll do a solo recital. And then she's doing five chamber music concerts over the, the next weeks of the festival. Oh my goodness. Ma amazing player, really personable, uh, loves working with young people, so she'll do a master class for talented young pianists later in the festival. Oh my gosh. So I mean, just, I'm sure her presence in itself is going to bring a lot of newness Absolutely. and excitement to the festival, but I'm sure there are a lot of just can't miss moments in general with the festival. So tell us just a little bit. Don't give us everything. Okay. Just a little bit. <laughs> well, you were looking at the dance uh, yeah. series uh, where dance is a big part of the festival. So we mentioned uh, Jessica Lang. Later in the festival, we have Palabolas, this fantastic company does really crazy stuff. You saw the contortions they're doing on the yeah. cover. <laughs> and then um, we will wrap up with um, the tattoo being a big event. I know okay. we'll go into a lot more detail about that later. Mm -hmm. Some of the other not to miss things. There's a fantastic trio of young singers called I'm With Her. They all have their own bands. You probably know them from, um, they've been in a lot of the big folk festivals around the country. So we'll have them at Sandler Center. Michael Feinstein, who's kind of the American songbook hero will be here. And then we have Chick Korea playing with, yeah. um, Chick has had, I think, 37 Grammy Awards. So yeah. we'll have him at the Sandler Center. So he's a big, big deal. Oh, he's a huge, yeah. my, my husband's a huge oh, really? Chick Korea fan. He's a classically trained pianist. So that's oh, how fantastic. I know Chick Korea very, very well. So well, your I'll, husband I'll probably know. knows Olga then too. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure he does. Yeah. yeah, I'll have to pass all of this to him. And, and since we're talking about that, because we have a, about a minute left, this is a really nifty way, this calendar, to kind of just keep up with everything that's going on for season 23. Can you tell us just a bit about this calendar? Sure, so this brochure came out about two weeks ago, has all the information on how to get tickets, and we're happy they're these are free to the, uh, anybody that would like one. So you can come by the festival box office uh, at 440 Bank Street, okay. or you can give us a call at 282-2811, and we'll be happy to mail one to you. And uh, you can uh, go through here. It's also a great time to invite your friends from around the country right. to visit the festival. So typically a third of our ticket buyers are outside of Hampton Roads. Uh, so if you go to a performance, someone on your left or right has right. traveled here to see the festival. So exciting, so much going on over the next few weeks. I, I know we have a lot more to talk about. We'll have to invite you back okay. to finish talking about that because I do want to make sure that everyone gets all the information for season 23 of the Virginia Arts Festival kicking off very soon, folks. Make sure you get your calendar, your brochure. It's a lot to do. Mark things off. <laughs> Robert, thank you so Great much. Great to be here. Making. Thank you so much. Awesome. We'll be right back. <laughs>
Welcome back to Coastal Connections. You know, now that we've gotten past winter, we're getting into spring now, and you know, depending on what day we're talking about, might be cold, might not be. So what we're gonna talk about now is once it starts to really warm up, we gotta prepare for how things are gonna be shaping up outside. And there is a wonderful show that's coming up, the Mid-Atlantic Home and Outdoor Living Show. You gotta be a part of this. You gotta find out more information. So joining me now, uh, good friend, Jeff Brzezzi. Good to see you again. Nice to see you yes. again. It's a pleasure to be back. Absolutely. Is that time of the year? Yes, it is. We gotta start getting home and outdoor ready. So what can we expect at the 34th annual show? Well, Ashley, it's that time of year when people are starting to think about remodeling inside and outside. Mm -hmm. So this show, I think, is uh, one of the best shows that the area presents. And we have over 200 exhibitors okay. and professionals who are there to answer questions on anything that people have um, from, like I said, from inside the home. Mm -hmm to hardscapes outside, to landscaping, to painting, windows. I mean, everybody will be there that represents the industry. Okay. And they'll be available for questions. They'll also be available to book appointments. So it's, it's kind of a must do for people that are considering any kind of home improvements. Absolutely, and I understand that Dr. Lori is back by popular demand. Popular <laughs> demand, yeah. Um, she is very popular. You know, she's a world-renowned antiques appraiser. Mm -hmm. And she's also the celebrity host of the Curse of Oak Island. Mm -hmm. Hugely popular. That's on the, uh, the History Channel, right? It is. It's yes. the number one show on yes. the History Channel, actually. <laughs> so she'll be doing two shows Saturday and two shows Sunday. Okay, okay. And we're asking people to bring their collectibles and antiques and to come sit in the front row. And she is guaranteed that she will get to everybody. Oh, really? Okay. And appraise their collectibles or antiques. Now, last year, I got to tell you this. This is pretty cool. Okay. Somebody brought in a $250 painting that they had bought. Mm -hmm. And they just by chance brought it to the show. And she appraised it for over $200,000. <gasps> oh, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, I have like, a question. Wow. If that happens, right, you bring something and it gets appraised for that amount of money. What, what's the next step to then get that money. You have to ask her out. No <laughs> okay, idea. I was always I would just be glad that. to have it, right? That's true. That is true. Yeah. Keep I mean, it she and, can yeah. tell you all about yeah. that. She can tell you how to preserve your antiques, how awesome. to sell them, um, everything about them. I mean, I don't know how she does it, but she is just an expert on it. That She's a pro. Yeah, there, there you She's go. As long as, as she can let us know, that's yeah. great. So start rummaging through your house now yeah. and, and get ready to come to the show. Okay, I do have to ask about Tim Mansfield, the butterfly guy. Tell us about Tim. Interesting in person. Um, yeah. Tim, uh, as you said, is known as the butterfly guy. He's mm -hmm. also a master gardener. Okay. He wrote for the pilot's garden column for years. Mm -hmm. And he um, raises butterflies and he's released over 3,000 monarchs into the wild oh. over the years. So he's gonna be there, he's gonna have a show on Saturday and a show on Sunday, he'll also have a booth, okay. but he'll be there to educate people on butterflies, everything about butterflies, how to attract them, how to encourage them to come back. Interesting. Um, he's just an interesting guy and I think it's gonna be very informative and educational for adults as well as kids. Yeah. Yeah. And I think so too, because I didn't realize that there were things that you could do to kind of keep them in a certain space or attract them to a certain space. So that'd yeah. be fun. I always thought there were butterfly plants that were supposed to. Right, right. You know, I mean, right. Yes, yes. But it's not. It's actually milkweed, and he'll be giving away milk seeds at his booth, and that's what it <gasps> takes to that you have to put in your garden oh, to this attract. Is fascinating. Yeah. Okay, so right now. So I've been down, reading up on this guy. He's milk fascinating. <laughs> Milkweed. <laughs> milk Come weed. get your seeds. Okay, there you go, because I definitely want to do that myself. Really quickly, about a minute left. Uh -huh. A lot of giveaways as well. You were talking about, of course, the milkweed seeds, but there would be tons of giveaways at this show. There will. Um, Eagle Bay Hardscapes, who is our presenting sponsor again, who we very much appreciate, will be giving a $3,500 water feature away. Oh, wow. Uh, there's a $1,000 bank card being given away. Um, you know, I think a lot of the vendors will be giving away things throughout the show. I'm not sure exactly, but it's a great time to come out, book an appointment, yeah. meet a pro, a professional that can advise you and help you with any projects that you have. Oh my gosh. So I'm excited yeah. and I think it'll be a great show. Absolutely. And there you see it, March 23rd and 24th, the Mid-Atlantic Home and Outdoor Living Show at the Virginia Beach Convention Center. Check that website for more information. Jeff, wonderful to nice see to you. Nice to see you again. Thank, Thank you. you so see you at the show. I'll, I'll be there. I got to get my milkweed seeds. Okay. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you. 
Welcome back to Coastal Connections. Okay, Easter is right around the corner, but don't worry, MacArthur Center has you covered. So many events coming up for March and April. So joining us now to talk more about it is Karen Husselby. Wonderful to see you, Karen. Thanks for having me back. You've been busy yet again, getting ready for Easter and spring in general, and I'm sure you're gearing up for summer already, but we'll talk about what you have going on for Easter at MacArthur Center. Okay, perfect. So yeah, so the Easter Bunny arrives on March 29th, nice. hops into Center Court, where <laughs> he'll be through April 20th. Um, if you haven't been to MacArthur Center for Easter before, we have this adorable set called Bunnyville. <laughs> so there's lots of little interactive things that the kids can do to kind of keep them occupied and then they could get their picture taken with the Easter Bunny which is so fun and I think we have the cutest Easter Bunny in town. So oh, I love it. Oh my gosh. And it, it's so like interactive too which is why I really enjoy just seeing these types of displays at MacArthur Center because it's not like oh you just go up and see the Easter Bunny but there's like a whole experience as you were talking about. There's a whole about. experience. Lots of things for the kids to do. Um, there's a wheel that you can spin. We have a hair salon. We have a 24 oh. karat bag a Hoppin' Fresh Bakery. Um, we have these big e eggs that the kids can play with. And a lot of times if the kids are a little hesitant to have their picture taken with the bunny, if we give them one of the little or the big eggs, they get very excited by that and they're a little distracted and then we Aww. can kind of sneak in a picture. Right. So that works really well. And then we have a bunch of events coming up as well surrounding yeah. the Easter Bunny. Yeah, I see there's going to be breakfast with the bunny as well. Now, how does that work? So we do. We do <laughs> breakfast with the bunny at California Pizza Kitchen. Nice. We try to make it really affordable for families. So it's $7 for kids, $8 for adults. Mm. Um, and we do breakfast pizza and the Easter Bunny is there. So you can take all the pictures you want with the Easter Bunny. The kids can have lots of time. It's um, maybe sometimes a little bit more relaxed and casual environment. Yeah. So there's a little bit of room for the kids to kind of move around and kind of get Get comfortable with the Easter Bunny and so that's always really fun and then we have story time with the bunny nice. um, and we're actually doing that with Barnes and Noble and we're reading how to catch the Easter Bunny um, but Aww. one of the really cool things that I wanted to mention is that we're um, we have a sign language interpreter as well mm. so the story time is for deaf and hard of hearing kids okay. along with hearing kids so we'll have somebody on site who will be doing sign language interpretation of the book so we're very excited we're doing a whole series with Barnes and Noble um, that way so we're trying to make everything we do like super inclusive wonderful. Um, yeah. and yeah. then speaking of inclusivity we're also doing calming bunny yes. um, and that's on April 7th S April 7th yes um, and we're doing that from 9 to 11 in the morning and that's for kids with autism and special needs okay. mm -hmm. so we do ask that families pre-register because we like to give them a little bit of extra time so we kind of do it in 15 or 20 minute blocks um, we have everything is very soft and quiet so we have a very calm environment for the kids that might need a little bit of extra time and that's been a very popular event that we've done. So if, if folks are interested, I would encourage them to go to our website and sign up soon so that okay. we don't book up. Okay. Um, but we're excited about that too. Absolutely. You know, MacArthur Center is so wonderful about making it uh, just accessible for all kids. You know, I, th I think it's wonderful that there are so many events that will cater specifically to your child. Yep. So that's great. And of course, we have to talk about our furry babies as well. <laughs> we have four-legged like children too. Four-legged like like children. Along. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Tell me about um, that. So <laughs> that night um, on the 9th, we'll do, um, or sorry, the seventh, we'll do pet photos um, with the bunny. Okay. So you can bring your dogs and cats and we'll see how they all, all the animals get along. Hopefully everyone gets along well in center court, <laughs> um, but it's a special time for people that um, want to bring their animals to take pictures and families can come as well. So that's a question we get a lot mm -hmm. is like, is it just my dog or can it be mom, dad, the kids and the dog or the cat? And it's a whole family experience. So we're happy to include everyone that wants to be in the picture. That's wonderful. Karen, we have about a minute left. Um, after all of the Easter festivities. What's going to be next for MacArthur Center? So one really important event we're doing is with the YWCA. We're doing the annual Walk a Mile in Her Shoes event. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't know, that's a me really a men's march. It's to raise awareness about um, domestic violence and gender discrimination. And so it's when all the guys wear high heels. Right. right. Um, so that's the Walk a Mile in Her Shoes. And they walk around center court. Um, and it's a really great event. We try to put kind of a fun spin on a yeah. very serious issue. So yeah. would encourage people to either to go to our website or the YWCA's website um, and get some information about that important event as well. That's awesome. Karen, thank you so much. We're going to throw up the information one more time for you. A lot going on between March and April for Easter, but of course the fun continues quite frankly throughout the year, so make sure you keep <laughs> up at shopmacarthur.com for more information. Karen, wonderful to thanks, see you again. Thanks for having me. <laughs> thank you. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Coastal Connections. You may have noticed I'm holding something here that looks very familiar. It's that time of the year to start talking about the pinwheels. I have a pinwheel bouquet here, but you know, there's 
bunch of pinwheels in here. You normally see them uh, just throughout the area around this time of the year. And if you always wondered what they were about, we're going to talk about that right now. Joining me is Season Roberts from Virginia Beach Casa. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. And yeah. Devin Cowie with Grow Smart. Wonderful to see you guys both. Thank you. This is a wonderful campaign. It's something, uh, again, that the, the pinwheels just kind of kick everything off because people are wondering what's going on, what's with the pinwheels. So let's talk about, Season, what these pinwheels are all about. So April is National Child Abuse Prevention Month, and the pinwheel is a symbol for child abuse prevention because it's whimsical, it's carefree, and so kids should shouldn't have to be going through abuse through their life. And so throughout the month of April, Virginia Beach Casa, we plant pin rolls throughout our community. You'll also see them around Hampton Roads. Um, people join together because they want our they want everybody to know what our community is doing to prevent child abuse. Mm -hmm. It's also the month of the military child, and so we partner with Grow Smart to um, host the Celebrating Children Pinwheel Palooza. And I think Devin's going to talk a little bit about that. Because well, it's a new collaboration, right? It is. So Celebrating Children has been happening for quite some time, and Grow Smart took it over in 2016. And Grow, uh, Grow Smart and Casa decided to come together to combine our two events, since we're honoring both um, Child Abuse Prevention Month and Month of the Military Child, and just kind of make it a bigger and better event each year. It's at Mount Trashmore and it includes a fun run for our kids and it's just a lot of fun to have out there and it's completely free for families. That's kind of the yeah. the part that we really hone in on is that it's free and it's a community event. Yeah, I was out there last year and I tell you what, that fun <laughs> run for those kids, yes. I mean, they look forward to that thing. <laughs> they were so excited about it, but that's just one of, oh, hello, Ashley. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> it really is just one of so many events that are out there. There was a, a petting zoo, I think, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then one of the really cool things Things I noticed too were there were lots of um, like student performers mm -hmm. that were out as yes. well. Can you tell me about that? Yes. Yeah, so this year we're going to have the hurrah players come back, and nice. I think that's really engaging and interactive for the kids because they can see somebody else doing something that they might be scared to do. Yeah. Um, we have lots of vendors coming out, and the good thing about this is Devin mentioned it's all free, yeah. so people will be giving away things or activities to do, and it's something that the entire family can do on a nice Saturday morning. Exactly. The best part is our event MC is Ashley. So. <laughs> Thank you. You, thank you. <laughs> but it'll be yeah. nice to um, see two nonprofit organizations yeah. come together just to collaborate resources to make a bigger impact in our community. Yeah. And what do you both hope that the message is that people get from this? I mean, obviously, you know, it's Child Abuse Prevention Month, Month of the Military Child. So there are those two messages for sure. But will there be uh, will there be like packets of information or things like that that people can kind of take with them? Mm -hmm. So yeah. go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, the exhibitors are actually family resource exhibitors. So really showing our families what um, resources are out there from activities to do as a family, of resources that city departments have for our family. So we, and they are giving out tons of information. They are all doing children's activities. And so it's just really showing our community what our city has to offer across the board from banking to city departments to fun activities with soccer or any kind of sports happening in the city. That's awesome. Now we have about a minute and a half left um, season because I really meant to ask you this at the beginning, but I just <laughs> want to dive into the pinwheels here and you can understand why. Yes. But tell us about Virginia Beach CASA okay. because not everyone is familiar. Right. So CASA stands for Court Appointed Special Advocates. Mm -hmm. So when kids are abused or neglected and they're going through the court system, we partner them with the CASA volunteer who's there to make sure that they're not languishing in foster care, they're not continuing to be abused, and our goal is to identify a safe, permanent home. Mm -hmm. And so we have about 80 CASA volunteers on our roster. They're people from all walks of life mm -hmm. who just want to help children or family groups in this area. And our results say that kids with a CASA volunteer do better in school. 91% of them do not return into the system. And our goal is to make sure that once they get in that safe, permanent home, they're not coming back either as kids or as parents with kids. Absolutely perfect. Thank you. And then, Devin, more information about Grow Smart? Virginia Beach Grow Smart is the city of Virginia Beach's early childhood initiative. So our vision is every child will be born healthy and our school ready to learn and reading proficiently by third grade. And so we are actually in, housed in the Department of Economic Development. We really, as a city, believe that it's the workforce development pipeline supporting the current workforce, but also building our future workforce for 20 years from now. It's awesome. Just listening to, you know, both of the descriptions here. It, I mean, this really is a match made in heaven for Perfect this event. Age, yeah. It really <laughs> yes. is, seriously. Let's throw this information up one more time just so people can know when the Pinwheel Palooza will be. There you go. April 27th from 9 to 12 at Mount Trashmore Park. It's going to be a blast. It's always a blast, and we certainly hope hope that everyone can come out and support. A lot going on for the month of April. Ladies, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I will see you April 27th. Yes, yes. Wonderful. Thank Thanks. you. We'll be right back. <laughs>
Thank you for sticking with us for Coastal Connections. You know, we've been talking about a lot of act, uh, outdoor activities, I should say, uh, that are going on between March and April, but there's one that's happening indoors that you really have to check out, a very special new exhibition at the Chrysler Museum. It's called A Labor of Love, The Caregiver Portraits. And joining me now to talk more about it, we have uh, Seth Feeman, the museum curator. Good to see you, Seth. Good to be here, thank you. Thank you, and Dr. D. Michael Geller, photographer for this exhibition. We appreciate you for being here too. Thank you very much. Th this is a, a beautiful exhibition. I have to tell you, I, I stopped by the Chrysler not too long ago right. and kind of like peeked my head in there a little bit. Right. I didn't get a chance to see everything, but it's, it's beautiful, it's moving, it's so inspirational. Can you tell us about these pictures? These pictures were made in the homes of caregivers, so in the space of about a half an hour or longer, mm -hmm. uh, you can experience caregivers in their homes uh, through their pictures, photographs, and their stories. Wow. What, what made you think to take these pictures? Yeah. It came because in my practice, I often saw caregivers bringing in their loved one, my patient, mm -hmm. and I discovered that the caregivers are tremendously knowledgeable about their loved one. I see them, it's a slice, an important slice of experience in their lives. They're with them 24 by seven. Yeah. And so they have a wealth of knowledge and experience that informs me as a caregiver myself through my profession to help them. Yeah. What, what moments were you hoping to capture when you were taking these pictures? Were you looking for particular moments that happened between the patients and the caregivers? In a sense I was. It's about their relationship mm. and what they value together, whether it's a devotional, whether it's an arts and crafts situation or a game, it's what means the most to them. And so what I would do, I would get to know them first. I would visit with them. What is your life experience like? And go from there. Absolutely, wow. Uh, Seth, tell me how this e exhibition came to the Chrysler. How did that whole thing come yeah, about? Yeah, it was really a great, a great uh, coming together. Uh, I was introduced to Michael, and uh, we were just going to talk about his work originally, mm -hmm. and he brought his portfolio in, and he showed me work, and before he left, we'd agreed to have a show. It just wow. seemed very clear to me that this work, not only is it incredibly strong, but it's got this incredible connection to people. That people are going to see it and they're going to identify with the images, uh, see something that they've experienced or something that they know about. Uh, and we've seen that since the show's been open. People come in and a lot of times they might not ha have a name for what they've done in their own lives, but there's the word caregiver. They're people who are doing this every single day. Uh, and it's been really phenomenal to have people come in and see these images and have the sense of connection. Yeah, I was actually going to ask more about that because I, I feel like the way that exhibitions are set up, it, it's, it's for an overall experience and for uh, people to take in the images a certain way. So, Seth, what do you hope people will be able to get from the way in which the exhibition is set up? Yeah, my, Michael and I worked really closely together. So he, he sort of took stories from the caregivers and their loved ones. Um, and had, had kind of written them up. And we worked together on um, slimming them down so they could fit on the wall. Mm -hmm. um, but you get this really interesting insight into people's lives and they, they really work hand in hand with the images. So you, you go in and you look at a very striking image and then you read the story and understand something about the dynamic between the caregiver and the loved one mm -hmm. that you might otherwise not understand or not see. Um, and one of the things that's been really rewarding about this show is seeing people spending time in the gallery. You yeah. know, it's easy to kind of look and look and look, but when you go in there and you start reading the stories, it's captivating, and you want to know more about these people, and you want to know more about their lives, uh, and the photos really pull you in to do that. Absolutely. If, you, if you've ever had to care in any capacity for a loved one, certainly going to affect you being a part of this exhibition. Dr. Geller, have any of your patients or uh, their caregivers mentioned anything to you after they saw the images that you took? Yes. Uh, <laughs> right, short answer. Right? right, short answer is yes. And uh, one comes to mind in particular, uh, she's been a caregiver for her husband for many years. Mm -hmm. She's not in the exhibit, mm -hmm. so she's a visitor. And she walked in and she said, this validates me. Wow. This tells me that I'm not alone. Mm. That there are many others out there who have had experiences like mine. Absolutely. And taking care of the one I love. Mm. Wow. 
it's, it's got to be powerful to communicate with them and of course see all the people who go through the exhibition and are touched by it. We want to throw the information up one more time. It's through June 23rd at the Chrysler Museum and you can get more information at Chrysler.org. Dr. Geller, thank you oh, so thank very you much. Privilege. And thank Seth, so much. wonderful thank to see you. Great and see thank you. you so much for joining us for Coastal Connections. Have a wonderful Sunday.